Bethlehem Church. Welcome to Bethlehem Church on this third Sunday of Pentecost. Uh, Matt is excited to start with our praises. Yes, sir. Just a few announcements. One, that Gordy Carlson's memorial service will be this Wednesday, Ryers North Valley Chapel. Uh, it will be at 5 o'clock. Uh, visitations from 3 to 5. The service is at 5 o'clock, and then there's a uh, uh, kind of celebration of life uh, at one of the halls uh, after the service. And you can find that, Ryers has um, the obituary there. So continue to keep um, that family, the Carlsons, in your, in your prayer. Continue to keep Judy and the Grishke family in your prayers as well. Tonight we have Pub Theology. If you don't know what Pub Theology is, it's our online gathering that we've been doing all the way through the pandemic, a uh, way for us to stay engaged. We ask some questions, some highs and lows of the week, and then we kind of dive into a topic. Um, I think we had one. Donna had a second question last week that we'll be using. So we encourage you to, to join us. Um, one of the ways that we continue to connect together. And then a week from Wednesday, we're going to try something I'm calling prayer and pizza. We're going to gather, I think it's 6 o'clock, right outside in our outdoor parking lot. We'll spend a little time in prayer. Prayer for each other, prayer for our neighborhood, prayer for the wider world. And then we'll walk on over, or we can drive over as well, to Pepino's, which is just a block and a half away. They've got outdoor seating and they've got indoor seating. Um, if that's something that goes well, we'll do that more often throughout the summer as well. Again, that's in a week from Wednesday. And I encourage you to to join up. Just let me know if you can make it so that I can try to call Pepinos ahead of time. And as I'll mention in the sermon, we're also working on some other large kind of group events for this summer and early September so that we may continue to kind of live into uh, this new season of life and ministry together. But let's now uh, use this opportunity to uh, slow down and to worship.
we please stand? Well, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit abide with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading comes from Ezekiel, the 17th chapter. 
Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord God. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree, and I make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. We'll read selections from Psalm 92 responsibly. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. On the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the words of your hand. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent. That they may show how upright the Lord is, my God, in whom there is no injustice. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. But we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we also are well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. <clears throat> for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, and therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ himself from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk and then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It's like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. 
Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Who you see it. We'll see how this is like one-on-one teaching time, right? Um, in that epistle text to Paul, the, 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 the epistle or the letter to the Corinthians, which was a kind of city called Corinth. It was a pretty big city back then, about 2,000 years ago. And Paul, who was like a minister who was sharing the good news, shared this letter to them. At the very end, he said, we don't look at other people the way that people look at. We see people through the, through the eyes of God, right? We see everyone the way that they look according to God. And God sees you as truly beautiful. God sees everyone around here through those eyes and sees all the beautiful things that we can do in our life for the sake of others, right? So when Paul says, no longer do we see people from a human point of view, um, because we're all a new creation, which is a way of saying that God is doing some wonderful things through you, through your brother Theo, through all of our children, through children and adults everywhere. We are all a new creation. We get to be part of what God's doing. So when you look at someone today, all through the day, I want you to say, that person is beautiful, because that's the way God sees them. Okay? So let's pray. God, we thank you for giving our eyes new ways of seeing you in this world. We thank you for the opportunity to love our friends at school or on the playground or in our music groups. We thank you for the opportunity to keep sharing about what you are doing, your mercy and your love and your forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're thick to the planning stages.
mention this in the announcement, but we're, we're in the planning stages for some bigger group activities for this summer. This includes an outdoor house concert with the amazing musicians like Matthew from Pentecost. I work on the dates, but we're, we're getting there. It's a concert I envision with children kind of flinging the frisbees outside and just enjoying uh, this new season of life. Again, we're ready for that. I'm talking with Jim Bloom. Where's Jim? There you are. Oh, right there. Hey, Jim. I'm talking with Jim about a Swedish smorgasbord. And uh, I think we're talking later September, which I'm hoping for all of your sake, there will be enough loot fisk and that white sauce you put on top to cover the taste, right? <laughs> I'm also <laughs> really excited to host, uh, finally, uh, an open house at my home in Holland. I've been waiting to get you there uh, for over a year. Well, I guess only a year. I've had the house for the last year. We'll trade the loot fisk, though, for some almond paste for our, all of our sake. Open houses are, I think, wonderful excuses to get the house ready, to get the yard ready, especially my yard, where the grass is already dead in the beginning of June, and the weeds have taken claim to so much of the yard, even areas that I just tilled in the spring that we had flowers in, and, and areas that I planned to put some vegetables in in the back. Like some tenacious door-to-door -door saleswoman that keeps coming back, those fabulous weeds refuse to take a Sabbath rest. See, weeds, as you know, are amazingly resilient. Weeds know how to mooch just enough space and just enough water to elbow out the other plants. These weeds know how to not only survive, but thrive. I'm talking about those delightfully prickly bull thistles and the Canadian thistles. I'm talking about creeping charlies, which is a great name for a weed, and lamb's quarters. Talking about ragweed and pigweed, pigweed, and even those perky little dandelions. I hate them. See, they all refuse to take a break. They refuse to stay confined and controlled. They refuse to be corralled. Uncontrollable would be a good description. Uncontrollable and unstoppable. Kind of like the kingdom or reign of God that Jesus describes in our second parable. Uncontrollable. And unstoppable. As much the mustard seed is no different from these weeds and how aggressive and invasive it can be. Now Jesus was likely referring to the black mustard plant, which was not really grown in Jewish gardens at the time, but instead could be found at the side of the road and on hills and even in underused, overgrown gardens like the one I know on 786 College Avenue in Holland. See, like other types of weeds, people at the time wanted nothing to do with this mustard plant because of how dangerously invasive it would become. They too, those mustard plants, would choke out the other plants, competing with and usually conquering the others for the water and the sun and that really good soil. In other words, once these plants took root, they wouldn't be denied. They were uncontrollable, unstoppable. So why would Jesus liken God's kingdom to such an invasive weed? Now, I certainly appreciate the typical interpretation of this parable, which focuses on the amazing growth of that small seed, or even the first parable, where God is in control that growth. Both are true. What God can do from even one small seed is and always will be remarkable. Mountains can and will be moved. Tombs can and will be opened. Death can and will be defeated. And praise be to God, literally praise be to God, that even minute small seeds can be nurtured into large towering centers for shade and rejuvenation. But might Jesus be going even further here, subversively taking us beyond the safe and tidy imagery that's become overly familiar to something much less safe and much less tidy? Verse 31, the kingdom of God is like a little mustard seed, like those unwanted plants 
taking over our gardens. Like those amazingly invasive, uncontrollable, and unstoppable weeds. Please hold on to your gardening tools for just a minute. And join me in squeezing through an English wardrobe for one of the best literary moments in the entire C.S. Lewis Narnia series. How many people have read that or read that to children or grandchildren? Many of you. I'm especially drawn to the short slice of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe where little Lucy, young Lucy, interacts with Mr. and Mrs. Beaver. Lucy's trying to wrap her mind around this Aslan figure, this, this uh, kind of lion king par excellence, a Christ-like figure with plenty of sharp teeth. And what do we even do with that? A lion, a Jesus-like figure with sharp teeth. Lucy asks this, is Aslan dangerous? Mrs. Beaver replies, if there's anyone who can appear before Aslan without their knees knocking, they're either, either braver than me or else just silly. Then he isn't safe, responds Lucy. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Don't you hear what Mrs. Beaver tells you? Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. Right? Safe? Is this kingdom of God that Jesus keeps talking about safe? No. Jesus never promises to ignore our sin, but instead dives right into it, teeth first. Jesus doesn't coddle regimes of injustice and evil, but instead confronts them straight on. Jesus doesn't stay neatly confined into places where we think we can control or corral his impact, but instead knocks down such walls and humbles us with a grace bigger and wider and deeper and more sufficient than our wildest imaginations. Sure enough, God has work to fulfill, which makes Aslan very dangerous to the status quo. In this, Christ will not be muzzled when bigotry and hatred are still being planted in our gardens. Christ will not be tamed when lukewarm faith and tepid gratitude are still being sown in our lives, Christ will not be pacified when creation itself is being degraded, when the church fumbles around in minutia, when people baptized into God's mission blatantly ignore the plight of the poor and the marginalized. Yes, the kingdom of God is like a mustard weed that takes control of our lives, growing in us a faith that cannot be muzzled or tamed or pacified. The kingdom or reign of God is also invasive, and that it will grow into every arena of our life, in every corner of creation. Again, safe? Not really. Not when this means strongly reminding us that our lives are to reflect God's beauty in all that we do. Not when this means God uprooting and destroying aspects of our life and lifestyle that bring pain and selfishness to others. Not when this means God pushing all of us to be honest with who we are and who we aren't in light of all that we've been created and redeemed to be and to do. Of course, like Aslan in the invasive growth of the kingdom, Jesus is orchestrating such dramatic confrontation with this world because God is so good and desires goodness for us and for everyone. For God to stay muzzled would be allowing injustice to romp and stomp through a world created for and by love. To stay quiet or detached would be allowing sin to overgrow that all that shines with God's glory. For God to stay on the sidelines or to allow us to fully run the ship into the ground would mean giving up on us. And God's too good, too faithful to give up on us. God's too loving, too merciful to turn away from us. And God is too beautiful and too honorable to break covenant with us. So this means work is still very much needed to take us and this world where we need to go. Like mustard weeds, God keeps spreading such comfort and confrontation in this world. There are tyrants to overthrow, powers of evil to confront, racism uproot, hearts to warm and minds to transform, branches to prune, 
sin to redeem, pride to humble, brokenness to heal, welcome to extend. Is Aslan safe? No. This is messy work that we're talking about. Painful, challenging, costly work, not only God, but also for us. This is not the kind of work that can simply be crossed off a to-do list or confined to some safe, definable space in our garden. God is growing something in us and through us and around us that cannot be contained. Something that takes over the rest of the garden. Something that demands our everything. Because it is our everything. Uncontrollable, invasive, unstoppable. All of this is true. And so is this. God, what God is growing is the very fruit of our salvation. The very fulfillment of our future. The very heartbeat of, heartbeat of who we are as sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ. Again, will being aligned with our Savior and will being servants to this kingdom be safe? No. But it will be good in the end. Unbelievably good. Water into wine good. Prodigal son returning home good. Healing of the leprosy good. Delighting in the restored garden good. New Jerusalem good. Banquet table with the good shepherd good. Experiencing resurrection from the dead good. The hungry being fed good. Light to the world good. Alleluias sung into everlasting good. Shade during a hot June day here in Michigan good. The end of all suffering. Death and tears good. The complete end of COVID and cancer good. So yes, the kingdom of God is like mustard weed. Amazingly invasive, un uncontrollable, unstoppable. But also ultimately predictable. Because we sit on this side of Christ's resurrection. And know to what lengths our Savior has gone and will keep going. To completely reconcile and restore this beloved world for us and with us and even through us. In the name of the Father, in the, name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. use the words of the Apostles' Creed to say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Spread the impact of the kingdom into all of creation, using our hands to share in your beautifully re relentless work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under the charge their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer, especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. We give thanks and pray for our church musicians, Sonia and Matt, as well as our many gifted members and friends who use their musical gifts to your glory. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes from this place, the cries of children, the melody of voice and instruments, and the songs from our hearts. May this music be heard outside these brick walls and into all of Heartside and this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share that peace with one another around you. Will the Lord be with you? Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's indeed right our duty, and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, 
gave thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In confidence, let us pray the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, Christ has set this table with more than enough for all. Come. Amen. In just a minute, I'll invite you to, to come forward. Uh, Donna is going to be the chosen person to the right of me here, uh, who, who will come first and just make your way down the center. I'll have uh, the two in one kits of juice in my right hand and or ones with wine in my left hand. We ask you to go back to your seat and we will commune together. haven't done so already, take the host, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for us. The 
blood of Jesus Christ given for us. So now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we receive from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God that provides us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.